All right, so let's get started on our HTML and CSS um, refresher exercise. We will likely break this into more than one video just so it's easier for you um, to go through. We're going to start out by um, setting up our HTML and then in the next demonstration we will get into the CSS portion of this refresher exercise. So with that said, I've already created an HTML file. I've got my file set up over here so you can see I've got an HTML file, I've got CSS, and then I've got an image that we're going to be able to use. Okay, so with that said, I want to just go over a couple things in this file because this is going to be really critical for you to be aware of moving forward is just understanding what these tags are. So first of all, we've got our doc type and this doc type on line one just basically tells um, the browser that we are using our most recent version of HTML. We've got our HTML tag that just tells us that we're using HTML. And then we've got the head tag, which is kind of like the brains of our document. Anything that's within it usually does not show up in the browser window, but does usually show up um, sometimes on the browser bar, or perhaps it helps control things like the CSS for the document. So it is still very important, but um, you just need to know that like actual code that goes in your page that's meant to be displayed in the browser usually is not in the head tag. Okay, um, the meta tag is usually going to be um, a, a special tag that enables us to do extra things. Um, in this case, this is basically declaring our character set which is allowing us to display our characters that are in our web page. So for instance, if you wanted to display a different language um, and different characters, then you would be able to change this here. So this is pretty standard and default that is used in most current web pages currently. So with that said, we do want to go ahead and enter in a title. So I'm just going to call this HTML um, and CSS refresher exercise. So whatever's on the title within the title tag is going to display on the browser um, title bar at the very top of your browser window. Okay, and we'll show you once we get a little bit further along. The body tag is really anything that is displayed within the browser window. So with that said, this is where we're going to have most of our actual information that we're going to add in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and indent over and um, that's just matter, a matter of preference and just good practice to indent. Um, and I'm actually going to wait to put in the classes. I'm going to talk you through a few things. Okay, um, so we're going to start out with div tags and then we're going to put things within it. Okay, so we're going to start out with a div tag that is going to act like a container or a box. We're going to actually um, put in this class now and we'll call it container. And I'm going to go ahead and comment out so that you guys can see notes. This is my parent container. Okay, and I'm just doing this also to remind you guys how to comment. So a comment is a note to yourself or to other people that may be working on this. Um, and at any point we can reuse these and change them out and do as needed. So we'll add in two more divs. And what's nice about text editors these days um, you have the ability to change your preferences. So for example, my closing tag does kind of auto populate so that um, the closing tab tag pops up for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nest two divs within this container. And these are going to basically be my child items. So although we are using very basic HTML and CSS, we're going to start the very basic introduction to start using Flexbox. And they do commonly refer to things as the child or a child item. Um, so we're just going to make a note so that you can see that that is that. And I'm going to add in another space there just so we have it spaced out so it's easier to see. Okay, um, Just like we have this container here, because we have this class, we are going to be able to call um, this class and do specific things to it. So with that said, I'm going to do the same thing for this. And I'm going to call this first one item 1. And this next one, I'm going to call item 2. 
and that'll make it super easy. Okay. Um, with that said, we can go in and find um, lorem ipsum, or you can copy anything from an appropriate website. And literally, we can just copy, you know, maybe a few sentences or a paragraph. I'm going to copy that entire paragraph and just put it right in there. And then I'll copy some more. And you can actually populate different text if you want. There's a lot of lorem ipsum generators out there these days that you could use. I'm double clicking a little bit too fast. Okay, so I've got text in there. I've actually needs to, I need to make this as a paragraph. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm just setting up the structure. And at this point, um, if we were to test this page, it really would not look like anything fancy. It would just be content at this point. So it's important to know that the HTML is going to build, build the structure of your page. Um, we can actually add in a heading. And then we'll add in another one here. Let's go ahead and do that. I think sometimes when you drop that closing tag down, it may help you see it a little bit easier. So you will want to um, determine what formatting works best for your workflow um, so that it's easier to spot errors. So I'm going to make this next one an H2. And you'll probably notice that visual difference in the size by default. So we can actually close lorem ipsum now. So we'll do a couple other things in HTML, but notice that that div and that div, one starts, then it closes, we have another one, and they are both nested inside of that container. So when we talk about HTML, you have the ability to nest items inside of one another. Um, we want to make sure we're going in order, otherwise things may not show up properly. Um, and making sure that we give things classes when we need to have more control over them. Not necessarily all the time, but in some cases um, it's very beneficial. So with that said, I do want to add in, I'm going to add in, let's see, a list because that is another basic thing that we want to just remind you how to do. And we'll just go ahead. And this is inside of that first div. Okay. And we'll make, let's make three list items. And then we'll just say item one, item two, and item three. Now we'll also put in a picture. And really where you put this picture is up to you, but it should be inside of either item one or inside of item two. So the way things usually display is left to right and then top to bottom. So if we were to test this right now, we just, we have a bunch of text and they'll go top to bottom. And the reason why is um, divs, headings, paragraphs, and lists are all considered um, block elements. And that means they go to a new line every single time. So the importance behind that is we're going to need to know how to position things differently, which when we get to CSS, we'll have a lot more control over that as we go. So we've got to get this structure finished up and set up. So we're going to add two more things. We're going to add an image and then we're going to add um, a link and or not a link, but a um, an actual link down at the bottom. So yes, a link. So with that said, let's see, we're going to go ahead and add in, let's, let's add our picture up top. So we're going to use the image tag and we're going to use source. And the way this works is I'm working from this index page here. I need to link to the image that's inside of there. I've got a picture that I downloaded that's just of a golden. And then we will talk about a couple of attributes that work with images. So an image is a self-closing tag. Um, the other thing to know is that it's usually in line. So until you have another block element, um, it may sit in line with anything else that is in line. Um, so it's good to know that. And it'll make a lot more sense as you use HTML more, of course. 
So with that said, let's take a look at these image dimensions. So I've got 500 by 486, so I'll say width. And there are ways to add in the width with CSS. Um, you'll learn that more as we practice this more, but at this level, um, this is still important for you to know this. And then with alt attribute, and this is just a description so that if the picture does not show up, this is what's going to show up in its place. It also helps with searches um, on Google, etc. So let's test this again and see what we've got. And so my image is not working. So I purposely make mistakes sometimes so you can see it. Um, I want you guys to know that it's common to make mistakes. So what is missing? All right. Sometimes I forget the images folder or students do. Um, sometimes we forget to type in things like that. All right. And so it's easy to make those kind of mistakes. We'll test it again and see if it pops up for us. It's not uncommon to make a mistake going through coding the first time. The more important thing is to know once you test if something's not working, um, how do we make sure that it does work? Okay, so at this point, it's a very plain page. We don't have a lot of control over anything other than putting structure in our page. Let's go ahead and add that link in. So we'll add this after the paragraph in the second item. So we're going to use ahref. Let me see if I can increase the size of this just a little for you guys. href equals. So the way this is going to work is we are going to link to um, either a website or to another page. So we can actually go and pick like a website. We can search for that lorem ipsum website if we wanted to. We'll just put that right in there. And then I'm going to make one more. I'm going to purposely copy this because I like to work more efficiently. So anytime you've already created something, um, sometimes that'll save you time and prevent you from making mistakes. And then I'm, the second one, I'm actually going to make a null link. And I'm purposely doing this so that you guys can see. A null link is basically going to act like a link, but it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Now, when we test this, links and images are both considered inline. So when they're beside one another, they do not go to a new line. So for us to get that to a new line, we would have to add in a break tag. Okay. So you would just basically put in a BR tag and that basically stands for line break. All right. So if we were to test it again, we have this right here. All right. So this is the starting point. This is basically our um, structure for our HTML that we need so that we can move forward and actually create the CSS that's going to bring everything together and practice that just a little bit more. So we'll demonstrate that in the next video. And then um, hopefully this will bring this all together so that this refresher helps remember helps you remember um, some of those basic HTML um, elements that you need to know to be able to build web pages.